Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. I've come up to Berry Head just after sunrise. A little bit misty this morning, but it's still very nice up here. Lots of gannets flying past on the way to something. Anyway, the reason I came up was um, I took a photograph of this scene not so long ago and posted it on Facebook. And uh, so many of you liked it that I decided, well, why not take a walk along the coast here and see what other photographs I could get. So that's what I'm here for. So let's see what I can find. So although it's a little bit misty and there's not that much light, I decided I'm going to see if I can take a different photograph of these three cornered leeks looking along the coastline. So what I've done this time, I'm in landscape and I'm going to take three or four shots through the image, focusing first on the leeks, then on the mid ground and then on the coast. I know that even at the F11 I'm probably going to use these leaks are really close to the camera and I might have to take a photo I might have to actually focus right on the foreground here and on the far edge of the leaks as well anyway let's try that shall we Well, not a bad photograph to start the day. I was really pleased with this. I did have to uh, stack three images on top of each other just to get the sharp focus all the way through. But I won't dwell on that. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there for those of you who want to know how to do that. Today is all about enjoying a nice walk along the coastline. I just cropped this image slightly different just to get cod rock in there on the left hand side. Not as bright and sunny as the image I took a couple of weeks ago but still really pleased with this. Anyway let's see what else we can find today. Well I think that's all I'll take from here. I've photographed Berry Head quite a few times so it'll be nice to take a walk along the coast and see what I can find. Okay, let's go. As I'm walking along, I decided just to take some photographs without the tripod and just see what I could find. So not all of these images are going to be the greatest but we'll document the journey along the coast. So this is looking back at Berry Head. Didn't like the path in the bottom left hand corner here so I then cropped it in slightly. Also it was quite difficult shooting into the sun so I used an auto ISO this one came out at uh, ISO 500, two hundredths of a second, F11 to get most things in focus. Oh, 
while there's plenty of photographs to be taken at Berry Head, so it's very difficult to uh, leave and walk along the coast. I've uh, brought two lenses out today. I've got my 16 to 55 mil Sony lens, just for the landscapes. But I've also got my 200 to 600 mil wildlife lens. So I've got quite a weight in the rucksack. And I've had to compromise with the tripod as well. I've got the panning head for the larger lens. This is a little bit more difficult to use when doing landscapes, so we'll see how we get on. What I think I'm going to do is stay, take quite a few shots just handheld with that tripod. And then uh, if I do find a really good composition, then just stop and take a bit more time. Those of you that follow my channel will probably recognise this image. I've taken this a few times, especially at sunrise. I'm at the South Fort at Berry Head and just looking along the coast where I'm going to be walking. So as I said, I'm just taking some shots without the tripod and seeing what I can find. Not the greatest day for photography. So some of these will be for reference to come back to when there's better light. Having said that, there are some good images looking down between some of these sea cliffs you can compose some nice dramatic seascapes and that's what I'll continue doing so onwards Made it to Sharkham Point, just rounded the headland and I can now see uh, Mansands and South Down Hill. Don't know if you can make the white cottage out in the distance. That's where we're headed. As I'm walking along I thought I'd uh, share maybe three tips that I've learnt over the last couple of years while I've been YouTubing and taking photographs. Maybe the main one is um, don't feel that you have to go out keep putting content out there just for the sake of it. Always make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. I've come out today for a nice walk. Yes, I thought I could make a film of today's uh, walk, but uh, more importantly, I wanted to get out, get some exercise, and I've found that if you do that first, the uh, photographs follow on quite easily. If you come out and try and force the photography, you often then end up going home disappointed. So this last section of the walk around the back of St Mary's Bay, I put the camera back in the rucksack and just enjoyed the walk and yes I did see some wildlife that uh, if I was ready I might have got some photographs so you're always going to miss some shots but does that matter? of course not there's plenty more to be had 
today it's not the uh, best of days for photography as you can see very misty that's a lovely shot along there on a clear day and I think I will take the photograph and I might be able to use the dehaze tool in the Capture One software just to make it a little bit clearer but it's never going to be the greatest of photographs also hopefully you can hear the amount of bird life around here as well so I might get the long lens on while I'm just sat here and see what there is Hey, that was tip number one. And another tip later on. Well, while you're waiting for the next tip, this is probably the best landscape shot I took of the day. Looking around the coast, to man sands in the middle where we're headed. And although it's a hazy shot, I'm really pleased with this. So tip number two is know your camera gear and know what to take with you when you're going out. Now I'm lucky enough to have quite a bit of gear, some lenses and uh, I've been doing this for about two years and still only know half of the settings on the camera. But I do know the ones I want for certain shots. It doesn't matter what gear you have, get to know it well and it will always help you make better photographs. A good example right now I can think of is I've just seen a peregrine falcon fly along the coast here and I've got my long lens with me but I haven't got it on the camera. Also I know that photographing a bird in flight, especially a peregrine, will be quite difficult. A photographer called Morton Hilmer, if you don't follow him, I'd give him a look on YouTube. He's a great wildlife photographer and uh, I saw one of his videos about using long telephoto lenses and he used it almost like a rifle and as he put it up to his eye he was already on the subject now you try doing that with a telephoto lens bringing it up to your eye and being on the subject straight away it takes practice so that's what he did practiced and practiced and then there's just the settings of your camera you know get the right shutter speed the right ISO and also know its limitations Okay, another tip later on, but I still have some way to walk. I'm going to put the camera away now because I'm just about to go up South Downhill. And with the uh, rucksack, that's going to be hard work. Well, I've just stopped to take this classic shot of Mansands and the uh, Coast Guard cottages beyond. Maybe this is an extra tip. Don't be afraid to take photographs from honeypot locations. It's always good to see what you can do with them. Well, on this occasion, this photograph was not going to win any prizes. There was just too much mist. I have tried to Bring out some detail around the cottage and the beach. But it is what it is. I'm still out for a nice walk. And it's not a complete disaster. This is really steep. Made even more difficult with the weight on the back. Quite a lot of loose rock as well. Do be careful if you're coming this way. Tip number three, always try something different. Came out for a walk this morning and was gonna do some landscape photography. But brought the wildlife lens just in case. And as always, I did find something. So I've just stopped at this uh, 
mere just behind uh, man sand and I'm trying to take some photographs of these wildfowl but it doesn't matter what gear you've got or where you live always try something different if you want to do some urban photography some black and white just go do it always try new locations as well and try places that you wouldn't expect also if you're not sure about a photograph take it anyway you never know you might come back to it in a week six months time and find something you like and lastly share it share it with all of us it's like sharing a big smile And you might be surprised at the reaction you get. Mostly positive, I've got to say. Well, as you could see, filming with the 200 to 600 mil lens was quite easy. Got some nice images, but taking photographs, that was another matter. As you can see from this one, I wasn't going to get anything much in focus. Same with this one. I'd had the focus set as a zone, so the camera was hunting around all the time trying to focus on the subject and focusing on lots of different things. This was probably the best of the bunch with these two shell ducks. Also I had the shutter speed at around about two thousandths of a second and I was all the way out at 600 millimeter. Same with this picture of a sail bunting when you look closely, it's just not sharp. So I've got some work to do on this. I know the lens is sharp because I took this practice shot from home looking at a seagull sitting on the neighbor's fence and I know I can get a sharp image. So back to the drawing board, go out and practice. Okay, I think that's enough from Mansands. I'm going to make my way back over South Downhill to Sharkham Point and then take a shortcut home into Brixham. This time I'm going to keep the long lens out and uh, see if I can get any bird photographs on the way back. Okay, let's get up that hill. Well, that's the worst bit over. Oh, out of breath already. Well, I think I'm going to call it a day. Don't know if I've got anything with the long lens, but it doesn't really matter. It's been a lovely walk. Hopefully, you'll take something away from the video. Although, my three tips were really just some basic life skills. Anyway, if you enjoyed the walk and want to join me again next week, why not subscribe to the channel? It doesn't cost anything. Give the video a like and I'll see you again next week. But for now, cheerio.